So David, if you could just start by describing the extent of the, the snake bite problem in Africa and, and why it's in such a dreadful state. The problem of snake bite in sub-Saharan Africa is largely unknown, but the pieces of information we do have, the bits of reliable information from certain countries, for example, West African countries like Nigeria and some of the East African countries, suggest that this is a very common, in some parts of Africa, this is a very common uh, emergency. Of course, not all the bites are uh, associated with injection of venom. Not all of them are inflicted by venomous snakes. But um, there are some, some examples, for example, that um, community studies in, in the part of Senegal uh, suggested that 15 or 20 people per 100,000 population were being bitten each year with uh, perhaps five or more deaths per 100,000 population per year. And uh, this amounts to a pretty serious problem. What makes it worse is that there is a, 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 a high degree of ignorance about the correct procedure following a bite. Um, and also there's a, a lack of trained medical personnel, even if the victim is sensible enough or lucky enough to get to a medical facility. There's a very widespread lack of, of skill and even interest among medical personnel in treatment of snake bite. And there's a lack of the essential antidote, which is antivenom. And why is antivenom lacking in Africa? It's a complicated story, and what makes it even more tragic is that the situation seems to be getting worse rather than better. Um, towards the end of the 20th century, there were a number of very well established European uh, manufacturers in, in Germany and France who made uh, antivenoms and exported them to, to uh, many parts of Africa. Uh, they have largely closed down or their products have become so expensive that they're no longer appropriate for people living in ordinary rural parts of Africa. Um, so it's, it's a problem of suppliers. Antivenom manufacture is not very profitable. It's not like making a heart drug where you can hope to recoup your, uh, the expenses incurred during research and development. Uh, you can't charge a high price for antivenom because the consumers are the most impoverished, the poorest rural people. These are the ones who are most exposed to snake bite, poor subsistence farmers. So it's an unattractive commercial proposition for a pharmaceutical company to go into antivenom production. And there are all sorts of other problems, like conserving the antivenom because it's a protein and it won't survive uh, uh, in, in good condition at very high, the very high ambient temperatures that exist in many parts of Africa. And um, the whole business of, of supply and uh, proper distribution to the parts of the country that have the largest snake bite problem, all this is deficient. As I say, ultimately, even if the hospital or dispensary has antivenom, the chances are the nurse, dispenser, or even doctor who makes the decision about treating a snake bitten patient may not have sufficient training to allow them to make the right decision. So this is not a not a case where there's there's no treatment. This is a case where there is a treatment, but it's just not accessible. Is that right? There are very good treatments, and uh, some countries have invested in the development of better antivenoms. Nigeria is one. The Federal Ministry of Health uh, generously supported a program of development, which gave rise to two completely new antivenoms, one made in, in UK, the other made in Costa Rica, in Central America. And um, the funding was sufficient to in, in, uh, allow these new antivenoms to be well tested in the laboratory and finally the ultimate test to be trialled in human patients. And the results were spectacularly good. Um, so there are remedies available. The problem is that to sustain interest in the funders, the ministries of health, or in some cases it might be a private uh, health system, uh, so that antivenoms can be purchased and, and supplied. 
So why do we need to embark upon a project to, to create a new pan-African polyvalent anti-venom that can treat all snake bites if there are already products around? One of the greatest problems about anti-venom is the demand for specificity or targeting of particular species of venomous snake. If you're going to make an anti-venom, you, uh, you have to choose certain venoms. You can't uh, choose all the venoms of all the venomous snakes in a particular region. You have to prioritize and use these venoms to immunize the helpful large animal like a, a horse or a sheep or even a camel uh, to produce the necessary antibodies, which is what anti-venom is. Um, so the difficulty is if you go from, diff from place to place in Africa, uh, you will require antivenom of different specificity. And this added complexity uh, adds to the problems, the commercial problems, of producing antivenom for Africa. So you can't just produce one at the moment, you have to have several different countries, even different parts of single countries. So the new initiative is to try and uh, look at this whole problem in a fresh new way, to try and uh, find, uh, select some antivenoms that not only neutral, will induce um, uh, neutralization of the species against who, which venoms is, they've been raised, but also to have useful cross-reaction to related species. And the ideal here would be a single antivenom for the whole of Africa. I mean, that may not be achievable, but you can imagine how this would simplify the problem of um, manufacturing and supplying antivenom for this vast continent. And it's easy to say Africa, as if you know all about what's going on in different parts of the continent, but there are some areas of Africa where we know practically nothing about the snake bite problem. The Democratic Republic of Congo is a prime example. This is a vast country, um, heavily infested with a whole variety of highly venomous snakes. We have tantalizing hints from time to time, uh, clues about the scale of the snake bite problem. And of course, the Congo has other devastating problems like ongoing civil wars, guerrilla activities, awful uh, aggression towards civilians, it, uh, appalling problems. But there's also a concealed problem of snake bite in, a, in an enormous country. So um, the ideal of a pan African anti venom would be an anti venom that targeted. Uh, and helped, tr cured, envenoming by the principal medical species in all parts of the continent. And modern science, modern scientific techniques should enable us to come, at least to approach that ideal. And the, the, the antivenoms available now, of course, they all come in, in standard doses of 10 mils. This new antivenom that is being talked about would come in a a single larger dose. What's the advantage there? Well, one of the difficulties about using antivenom to treat a patient who is truly in venom, not just bitten by a snake, but showing early clinical signs that venom's been injected and is causing trouble, local pain, swelling, uh, bleeding, uh, perhaps uh, some paralysis developing, or the patient's blood pressure is falling away, they're becoming shocked. Uh, in that situation, is to know what initial dose of antivenom should be used and very often at the moment uh, a single which is an arbitrary amount of antivenom is given one vial one ampoule is given and the doctor or nurse may think well right we've done it that, that's all that's necessary the the idea of a of a, um, a single ampoule for treating all of them would be that you would cover the average requirements of an average patient of course, in some very severe cases, you might have to repeat the dose, but it's the initial dose of antivenom that uh, would be calculated in the design of this, this ampoule to, co to cover all the species. So what happens to these patients that don't get the right initial dose, these patients who only get a small starting dose that's just not enough? Well, they may go on to develop some of the lifelong crippling effects of the venom. They might lose a finger, a toe, a hand, a foot or even a limb. But even worse, you might say, they might well lose their life because um, we can't tell exactly how much venom is injected when a snake bites a human. 
Um, we know the maximum amount that's possible for uh, particular species, but um, to only partially neutralize the venom means that there's still venom in the body uh, being circulated, uh, targeting the particular organs and tissues and uh, producing life-threatening effects or permanently crippling effects. So you've worked in Africa for more than 40 years and you've been to numerous countries and you've seen snake bites in many, many communities. If, if you were asked to describe the impact of a snake bite on a, a rural African family, how would you do it? Well, there are, there are villages, uh, there are areas of West Africa, northeastern Nigeria, which I know particularly well, where snake bite is such a common and such a devastating problem that there will be scarcely no family in the village uh, that hasn't lost a relative, a near relative, in, in living memory. So I'm not talking about a very rare disease here. I'm talking about an intensely common problem. And the impact, of course, will, might be death, or, or even if the patient's lucky enough to survive, they may, may be left with a, um, a long-term effect of the snake bite that completely alters their life. For example, a young farmer is bitten on the foot and uh, loses that foot due to the tissue-killing effects of the venom. Uh, he won't be able to work as a farmer. He will be a cripple and a beggar in those very poor communities. His survival will depend on the generosity of his family and his, his neighbours and the other villagers. A young girl may have a deforming injury to, the, to a limb as a result of a snake bite. That will ruin her chance of marriage. I'm afraid these are very tough competitive societies. They are unforgiving societies. So snake bite can have a devastating effect not only for the, the victim of fatal envenoming, but also for the ones we might think were lucky to, to survive. But they survive with, with very serious impairment. And there are lots of other variations. I mean, some uh, snake venoms cause bleeding, for example, into the brain. So a young person may be left with the sort of consequences that will be familiar uh, in people who've had s strokes. You know, they're left with paralysis of one side of the body, that sort of loss of... Uh, ability to speak, that sort of thing. So we're talking about a burden of mortality, of death, and also an even larger burden of morbidity or permanent, socially unacceptable, crippling deformity. Thanks. I think that'll do it. Cheers.